Hey everyone and welcome to Almost Cancelled, I'm Peter, that is Connor, and we are going to talk about Dark Season 2, Episode 6. It's called An Endless Cycle. Otherwise, uh, that's also what we refer to uh, me and Connor having conversations, an endless cycle, which seems that there'll be never an escape from. It does feel like that a lot of the time. And Although, of course, the amusing side of this is that, unlike with the, the, the show, it's not the cutting of a knot that'll solve my problem, it's the tightening of a knot. Mm, mm, I bet. <laughs> I mean, didn't really think that we were going to open this by talking about your suicide, but... No, I was talking about hanging you, not me, you prick. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be absurd. Don't be absurd. Uh, so, yeah, Endless Cycle. So this was exciting because we ended last episode with Jonas coming to to 2019, to just before his father died. And we actually start the episode with Jonas, the you know original timeline Jonas waking up in his bed that morning. And which, by the way, was it just me that was felt a bit weird that it was essentially a previously on segment at the start of this episode? Actually, yeah, where it kind of rewound through yeah. everything. Yeah, and I get why it's there. It's just it's funny because it, it did just kind of feel like a previously on. I'm like, I've never had this for this show before. It's weird. <laughs> it's weird, like two thirds into a season. Yeah. Um, but it did do this thing where it was rewinding until it eventually got back to the, the first episode. It eventually went back to Michael committing suicide, and then all in titles, and then Jonas wakes up. Uh, uh, you know, and I will say one of the things that I liked about this episode was just seeing a lot of the characters be happy in ways that I've never seen them be happy before. Like there's a scene where yeah. our Jonas, which is what I'll refer to the one who's traveled through time, uh, our Jonas. Uh, runs into uh, Ulrich and, and Katharina. They're driving, right? And Mikkel's in the back seat. And Ulrich starts cracking jokes about how Martha's got a crush on him and calls him, like, Romeo and stuff. And he's got yeah. a smirk in his face and I'm like, Aw, happy Ulrich! That's weird, isn't it? <laughs> I've never got to see happy Ulrich before. This is kind of sweet. Yeah. <laughs> I, was, I was kind of, you know, I was like, man, everyone's so happy. Like, Catherine is happy to see Hannah and, and whatnot. Um, it's, uh, it's a little surreal, isn't it? It's surreal. And it, do, you, do you know what it effectively kind of does? It kind of makes you go, you know, I hope he can fix it. But, I mean, don't, cause, because the, the time travel is essentially making all their lives turn into a living hell, right? And there seems to be no escape from it once it's gotten going, right? They, yeah. they were happy up until it all started, at least, you know, in that time period, and then it all kind of went um but it, right away you know jonas comes down the stairs he gets some breakfast his dad's there uh they do a little surprise you know a little jump scare almost with them <laughs> just to kind of introduce him and not notably uh jonas uh, has, has had the same taste for milk his entire life because the bottle's the exact same as the one that that uh, older Jonas had before. Yeah. And the only reason why I, I'm a man, because obviously that's not that weird, M milk cartons don't really change that often. The reason why I mention it is because this particular milk carton, uh, which I assume is a normal thing in Germany, looks odd to me. It's like a dark glass ball. It is a, a strange, you know, kind of receptacle for milk. Because the first time he pulled it out, you know, the older Jonas, I, I, I thought it was booze at first until he poured it into whatever he was having. Yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, it's just milk. All right. Um, but hey, uh, so, and there's some moments here where, like, you know, Hannah comes in and she she's like, oh, so you sure, Michael, you don't want to come to the, the Ulrich and Katharina, like, party tonight? And he just gets this look in his face. And I'm like, okay. So, so what's exciting about this episode is we get to see Michael actually, because this is the thing, Michael had one scene in season one. <laughs> Yeah, you know, not counting Michael, of course, as a child. Michael, the adult, had one scene in season one, uh, and like a photograph that we've seen like fifty times. So he actually got to be the character of this episode. But more importantly for us, I think, which I think is exciting, is to actually see him, you know, know this, like know this about himself, and and react to things, kind and kind of, yeah. You know, like, seeing him kind of freak out when he sees the yellow jacket or not wanting to see, like, Ulrich's family. And I kind of like something this episode did as well, where it kind of implied that partly the reason why no one's noticed as of yet is that, one, they don't see a whole lot of Mikkel yet anyway. Because I think there's a moment later where Hannah sees him and it's like, oh, he's grown up a bit. And she has that weird deja vu moment where she's, like, staring at him for, like, you know, mm. 10, 20 seconds and she's not, she's kind of, like, distracted. 
and it's this kind of idea like yeah kids change their appearance a lot you know as they're growing up because they're just constantly growing and i'm like yeah "Yeah, up until the last maybe year or so he wouldn't have looked exactly like he did when he went back in time maybe the last two Uh, years you know um you know when he's five years old i'm not going to look at him and go oh that's just like you michael and you were that age yeah Uh, so i kind of appreciated that although i did think it was getting kind of scary at one point when they were at the party and they were going through old photographs like prom and stuff and i'm like whoa what what, what if young mickle shows up in one of these photographs that would be weird like i was almost expecting like a comedy moment where he is in one of them but they've all got their backs turned before he like presses the clicker or something like that and uh, like no one knows the thing though that probably just write it off oh yeah because at this point why would they suspect that there's time travel (laughs) yeah yeah but it was just it was just it was funny because because we're seeing you know the younger actors in these photos at like prom or whatever it is and i'm like wait he could be around here like he might pop up in these photos if they keep looking for it you know yeah uh, strictly but um so now michael's stuff is interesting there's a scene where michael comes in to use the bathroom and he sees him and he kind of has a panic attack and it's almost like he has kind of repressed a lot of these memories but it's all kind of coming back now that it's it's hitting the time period and he's seeing Mikkel in the I, flesh. I don't even think it's necessarily repressed. You know, the way he talks about it later is the things, the memories kind of just faded and that, that feels very natural to how memory works. Like, uh... Yeah, it, it there doesn't... are a lot of things that I I know happened to me as a kid because you know there are pictures or I've been told about it, but I couldn't remember it. But every so often you'll you'll see something and you're like, oh, I kind of remember that. It kind of comes back to you. Right, but he's he's like eleven. Though, when he goes back, right? So he's about that age, ten, eleven, something like that. Yeah. Right. So I feel like it would be hard to forget that you had another set of parents up until that point, and it's not like you know. Like if he was five when he travelled, that, that, your argument would be solid. Yeah, he probably would just forget everything from before that age. No, I get what you're saying. Um, I think it is just a case of though, it, it was just maybe he kind of as he got older was like ah maybe you know, maybe that's not quite what happened. You know, maybe you know, he thought okay, you know, he obviously knew he was you know uh, adopted, right? But um. Maybe he's like, oh, whatever happened before, you know, it wasn't really. Actually, do you do you think um, this ties into the whole pills thing that Ennis was giving him? Like, the idea that she was, like, dosing him up so much for those first several yeah, months maybe, or years yeah. that... So it kind of blows. Yeah, because I think it would be... Because even if you argue that obviously some things fade, I don't think... I don't care uh, what you say. Uh, you know, an 11-year-old would remember time travelling and that he's from the future. You know, he would remember phones and things that he used in the future uh tablets whatever you know like yeah ca- that yeah. kind of thing um but he does seem to have kind of let it fade and i wonder if it's uh, genuinely he just started to believe that he was crazy or that you know this this wasn't really he can't be right there's no way he'd actually time traveled if he yeah. if he was convinced in therapy or something or Ennis just dosed them up enough that he pretty much you know so but you know these things are starting to creep in he sees the yellow jacket on on jonas uh, and kind of freaks out a little bit uh, and he's, he doesn't want to go and see see the Ulrichs, uh, so the Nilsons, I should say. Um, the Ulrichs. Multiple Ulrichs. <laughs> Ulrichs everywhere. Um, I mean, that kind of is applicable in this show. It, well, it is, yeah. We do actually technically have multiple versions of Ulrich, but you know what I mean. Uh, and later on, of course, uh, well, this is kind of awkward, because I, I really should have started with Jonas, because Jonas, the next thing that happens with, with Michael is that Jonas shows up, but Jonas has other stuff before he gets there. So I suppose what we'll do is we'll jump back with uh, time-traveling Jonas, um, because yeah. this this day's Jonas has went to the lake with Martha, Bartos, and Magnus. Um, and we'll just briefly mention Magnus uh, sees uh, uh, Francesca uh, yes. in the water, and he thinks she's dead, which ties into a story that we were saying earlier, which was a joke, but, you know, they, they say it. Um, and it turns out she's okay. And it's kind of their first little spark. Um, who who would have thought that a teenage boy would become attracted to a girl that sees topless uh, in, in I a lake? I know. Never would have predicted that. Nah. Totally, totally, totally don't buy it. Don't, I don't buy the, the relationship here at all. <laughs> she seems totally at ease with this, though. Um, yeah. Uh, so... Yeah, yeah, they're, they're both kind of like he. Just, she seems like touched that he did actually want to save her. Like he actually seemed to care that, that someone was yeah, dying. Yeah, no, it was pretty genuine. He, he was like, yeah. oh, you know, he glanced over and he's like, oh, oh shit, okay, I should probably go and check on that. Yeah, well, he's having a piss, mate. Yeah, <laughs> just just, just yeah. for context here. 
but no, Jonas and Martha, uh, the, the, the Jonas of the time period has to leave because he has to go show Ennis how to use a tablet because she's old and silly. Which I actually kind of like this in a subtle kind of jab at uh, Claudia a couple of episodes ago. It's, just, it's a nice little, like she's yeah. cause, because she's of the same time period, you know, she's around the, around the same age as Claudia. I just thought that was pretty funny. Um, but so future Jonas, uh, I won't, no, I won't say that because that's a stranger. Uh, our Jonas. Jonas. Our Jonas goes in and he obviously buttons up his jacket so no one can see he's, he's, he's you know, he's noose mark. Scar. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. sits down with Martha and gives her this little speech. Uh, also, they find the, the thing, the thing, the little coin in the necklace. Pendant, yeah. Pendant they'd left. Uh, well, it's a coin at first though, right? It's just a, like a coin. Um, I don't know because it already has the little hook mark on it for them to... Oh, did it? To... I'm pretty sure, yeah, I'm pretty sure it already had that on there. Yeah, I, I assume she just made a necklace out of the coin because it was this old coin they found in the in the lake. But anyway, they find that together, so that's kind of what's special between them, and it kind of uh, explains the the emotional importance of that, and and just the the thematic idea that it was you know say Christmas, say uh, patron saint of travellers, mm-hmm. which is a nice touch. So Arjo just sits down with her, gives her a little speech about you know what he wants and you know love and destiny and wanting to say things to her, and they have this this kiss. And he knows very well that they are they are uh, aunt and nephew <laughs> at this point, uh, but he's I think he's past the point of caring. And one of the surprising things for me actually, when we get to the party later uh, with this timeline's Jonas with Martha, is that that dream we've been seeing is actually a, a flashback dream. Uh, like they they actually had sex uh, this summer because they said in season one they referred to like oh the feeling you know we'd be that that thing we shared last summer but i don't think it was ever clearly implied that it was straight up they had sex like i, I think because she was already with bartos i always just assumed oh they could maybe kissed for the first time or something and that was sure. kind of it yeah, yeah. Um, it does well, make it does make jonas's like dis- not disgust necessarily but the, the realization that that's his aunt in season one funnier that they've already had sex yeah it's already happened it's too yeah. late <laughs> yeah that that ship has sailed yeah <laughs> um so that 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 happens. Uh, worth mentioning, but our Jonas goes to the house, and at first Michael thinks it says Jonas. He hugs, you know, and, well Jonas hugs him because he's all like you know emotional, seeing his father alive again. And then he's like, "Hang on, your hair's weirdly long." Yeah, and then he's like, "I know," and he's like, "No what?" I, I'm gonna tell you now. I was a little disappointed that I didn't come back up later with the hair thing, um. Because when uh when when our Jonas and and Martha are kissing on the beach, she has this you know his her hand in his hair quite a mm. lot, and then when they kiss later, she she puts her her hand around there again, and you know, I almost thought there was going to be a moment of like her feeling like oh no you know it doesn't feel the same as earlier. I think she's too caught up in the moment to notice that relatively small detail. No, no, sure, but I just thought oh you know maybe maybe that they they play that you know it felt different to earlier in the day. Yeah, it, you know, it's, it's not different enough. I buy that she doesn't notice no, it. Especially, I, I it, especially as a teenager who's like caught up in the the romance of the moment. You know, oh yeah, yeah. her first time probably. She's. I, I'm not saying it's unbelievable. You know. I'm just saying I, I was, you know, half expecting it. So he's like, I know, and Michael's like, no, what? It's like, I know who you really are, and he does this thing because young Michael in the car earlier said, "Give me an ultimate fist bump" or something to that effect. So he does that, and Michael just sort of like. Why did you say that? Like you know, but he's, he's kind of like clicking in his head a little bit as he's as he's realizing what he's saying. He's like, you know, I I know that you're actually Michael Nielsen, and we get this this scene where they sit down and he tells him uh, that you're here to stop him committing suicide because that sets everything on a path. It's very clear early in this conversation that that Jonas is wrong. Oh yeah, no. Like honestly, a whole episode, I was thinking, no, he's inadvertently going to cause the suicide. Yeah, you know. And if you weren't sure about it, like as soon as he goes, "Hey, Dad, I know," and he's like, "No, what? What the hell are you talking about?" Because because what what one of the natural things that I think we think of in this is that, like, is he changing anything, or was he always going to visit, and that was always going to be what leads always the yeah. case. Yeah. Um, Although we we have been saying that the cycles are different, and we actually get proof in a little bit from a line of dialogue that cycles have been changing, and we'll get to that in a minute. Um, but he, he shows him the letter, and this comes back to the book going back in time and only being written because the writer sees the book. You know, he writes the letter because he sees the letter. Yeah, um, because Jonas told him, "Hey, you leave me a letter." <laughs> so here we get more paradoxes. We're just we're spiraling in paradoxes right now. That's, that's we really are. This is what we're doing, uh, and then. 
old Claudia shows up, which is is great because this is the great thing about a time travel show is that she's had her like her goodbye and it's been kind of this this neat thing, but we can still see her earlier appearances in her timeline essentially and her in her life timeline. We can still see earlier moments of her, but they're still further in the timeline for us. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's good stuff. This and this yeah. is what sets up kind of what we were saying the first time we found out Adam was Jonas. This idea of him fight at war against himself because she flat out says, now admittedly she could be lying too, but she does kind of go into something we were theorizing last episode: is that is Adam just lying? Does he want this to keep happening? And yeah. is he just sending Jonas to make sure it keeps happening? Um, and that's what Claudia's claim is, and she says, you know, you know, he doesn't want to fix this; he wants to destroy everything. And the most interesting thing she says, though, by a country mile, is seriously, she says, "You think, you know, like, because at one point Michael says, oh, but if you go back and stop this, or I don't go back, you'll never be born.' And you know, he seems upset, upset by that because he's his father, obviously. Um, you know, and Jonas is clearly willing to just do this. He's at the point where he's willing to kind of let himself go for this, and that, that's kind of why he was kissing Martha almost. That's why he went, why he went and did that. I mean, d- debate your, you know, the 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 purity of their feelings all you want. He thinks he's saying goodbye because he thinks he's about to wipe himself from existence. Yeah, but, but um, Claudius. Uh, so before Claudius says it, Michael says it as well. You know, um, you know that hey, maybe you're more important than you realize. That's not the line I was going to say. Okay. But not, I just don't know because Claudia says that as well. She does, um, but that's not even close. No, the line she says that is easily the most interesting line in this whole episode is, "I have seen a version of these events without you, and it's not any better. It's yeah. worse, even. Like you don't understand how important you are." Um, so there was a cycle where he succeeded. I mean, maybe. I mean, no. Arguably, the first cycle is oh, where. Uh, yeah. Yeah. The like. First, yeah. I mean, I, I would go as far as to say there's probably been multiple cycles where he didn't exist. It's probably been going in and out, you know, of him existing yeah. as they try and change things. Like because he is maybe the at the core of the anomaly, if that's even true. He might not be. Maybe someone else is at the core of the mono- anomaly. But yeah, it it was one thing when Adam says it because that's kind of just egotistical and it's self indulgent, right? At that point. Um, for him to say, "Hey, you're you're at the center of this," because of of course he would say that about himself. Yeah, uh, coming from someone like Claudia, it feels more, somehow more trustworthy, even though the, the, it's kind of still just as baseless. Yeah, and we've got these two sort of like pitting pitting himself against himself, essentially. This idea of this war between Jonas and Adam, and it's worth knowing at the end of this episode, there is absolutely nothing that happens here that does not suggest to us that he's just on the path that he's always going to be on to become the stranger and make all the same mistakes. Because he goes off with Claudia. He goes off with Claudia into the cave. His father is, is basically... Because it sounds from this episode that his father wasn't even thinking about committing suicide. He not, th- hadn't even considered it. It was only because the, the, that he was told that he does that he was like, well, pff, guess I better do it then. Yeah. Which, again, would be an interesting change. Okay, he, Mick, think, Mickle still goes back, but then you don't commit suicide. What does that lead to? Uh, yeah. I think the interesting thing here, though, is he chooses to commit suicide. Not uh, because, you know, we always always speculate, like, oh, you know, what, what was his headspace like? Yeah. And, and again, it's not here just because he knows he does it, but it's more because he knows that if he does this, it means his son will have, you know, will continue to exist. Uh, that, that's what it's about. It's about his, his son living, right? Essentially. Why does he have to commit suicide for that to happen? Because Jonas is telling him the whole time, like, oh, that's the start of it, right? Jo- mm. Jonas is saying, hey, if I stop you doing this, this is it. You know, I, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll be wiped from existence. So h- him as a father is going, okay, well, then I need to kill myself to make sure he lives. In that case, I'd say to Jonas, why, why does that necessarily stop, um, Mikkel going back, uh? I guess no. we could. How'd you go? go oh, no, uh... I was going to say it's it's the start of the you know last uh, episode or maybe the one before. Um, you know, we were talking about how is that the starting point of this loop? And you know, as far as Adam kind of convinced him, and you know, they kind of came to that conclusion that this is that starting point for whatever reason. And you know, they believe that preventing that will you know undo not spiral that chain of events whatever oh, yeah, happened in, in, you know, at this in the point, next few months at this point no we have to assume that everything adam said is bullshit like, right but but i believe correct if i'm wrong jonas came to that conclusion on his own uh, you know adam was like oh what was the start that's, that's true no he does but adam kind of like he knows he's going to say it and then he 
So as says, yeah, you're right. Like, you know, like... No, no, he does. He kind of convinces him along the road. But Jonas gets to that point, presumably because for Jonas, you know, whatever happens that night then affects, you know, all the, the things that happen with his friends, you know, you know over the mm. next you know, six I'm, months or so. And for the record, I'm still not convinced that this is the start of anything. I, you know, as far as I'm concerned, Jonas is saying that because it's obviously the first thing that happened to him that started him on this path, but yeah. there's nothing to us that I think says that is definitely the start of all the, the knot. No, the, no, the we, we, we're talking about this, you know, the, the yeah. only reason that it worked so well for us to be the start is because that was also the start of the show. But the, I, I feel like people at home or in the car or in the bathtub, I feel like, you know, most of our loyal fans listen to us in the bathtub, I'm sure of it. Um, <laughs> they're all screaming at us because there's one major element of this scene that we've not spoken about yet, is that Michael describes how he went into the cave the night he disappeared. And we get this revelation that Jonas, who looks like he does now, so presumably soon in his timeline, uh, yeah is actually the one who takes him into the cave to make, because to, to, he, he says, how did you find the door? He's like, I didn't find the door. I was shown the door by you. <laughs> You're like, that, that's what we find out here. We see that, uh, you know, he, he, he kind of pops out behind the tree, just kind of like Noah, he kind of just pops out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And obviously they were running away at the time, mm -hmm. you know, and Michael fell over and was separated from, you know, that, that current period, uh, Jonas. So, and then our Jonas just stepped in and went, hey, come with me. Yeah. Uh, which makes sense why he freaks out a little bit at the yellow jacket uh, when, when he sees it again. Um, but it's this interesting thing where we have this Jonas who then makes sure that it happens as it's supposed to. And it's kind of like Claudia letting her dog through the door so that things happen as they're supposed yeah, to. Yeah, I, I assume this comes after whatever conversation he has with Claudia now. Yeah, well, uh, we, well we know from from Stranger Jonas that... Uh, that she was kind of his mentor. Yeah, that she mentored him and... Presum yeah. I, like, I don't know if that means he's going to be with her for, for like the rest of his story up until you know we get to middle age Jonas but certainly oh, at, at least for a little bit um, yeah. but I mean it, it, she is also very convinced that he is you know uh, important at the centre of things let's just she's seen the cycle without him and he should exist uh, so it's probably at her urging that she convinces him to okay you should probably fulfil that bit of a you know that, that kind of prophecy and make sure it happens so go do that do you think we ever get to get a glimpse of this this world without him and why uh, it's so bad i think that could potentially be an interesting way to start off the third season because it wouldn't shock it, it really would not shock me if we do get that for a while and then it, you know then we go then it gets fixed to some point so we can finish the show with jonas and it also wouldn't shock me if the show pulls something really ballsy, like, because uh, it, it always it keeps making things more complex, and we'll get to the final moment of the episode later, where it really starts connecting things together. I'm like, oh my god, more, you know, tangled is, web. Is, is it possible that we end this season with Jonas not existing somehow? And, uh, and, and you know, we, we open season three with that, with, with a world without Jonas, and then it's like, okay, hang on, shit, this is way worse. <laughs> <laughs> do we somehow see both at the same time do we get multiple versions at the same time because we split into essentially two realities i don't know like I, I, that, that is a yeah. ballsy i have nothing to base that on i'm just i'm thinking of how ways that you shake it up in the storytelling and like you know yeah show how how, how things even even if things are vastly different they both somehow get to the same b from a kind of thing I, I don't know um i, I could see them pulling like a, a weird episode like, you know i'm thinking like, I, I didn't watch a whole lot of malcolm in the middle but i know of the famous episode where you see two versions of the the, the episode where one where his mum takes him to bowling with his friends and one where his dad takes him to bowling with his friends and how different each one is and we see that we constantly see them side by side and like how different mm -hmm. it is and what knock-on effect that has it wouldn't have shocked me if this this show pulled something like that but in a more serious you know dark style yeah yeah i can see that yeah um, but at the same time, I'm, I'm just completely rummaging in the dark here, and no pun intended. I'm just, you know, uh, thinking of wacky things that it could do. Uh, so, yeah. But for for me, that was the, that was the that was the line that made me sit up and go, "Oh, I have seen versions of this 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 cycle without you in it, and it's yeah. it's not a good I place." Think, That's yeah, fascinating. This whole scene is by far the most interesting part of the episode. Yeah, uh, I enjoyed the rest of it though. Like, I was really into seeing like. Uh, everyone else on this I, uh, day i enjoyed it well enough i will say the episodes it wasn't as exciting as i thought it was going to be um maybe that's an expectations thing but you know the end of last episode we were like oh we were, like, oh, we're going to do that 
yeah we're gonna mm. go see all that stuff and and it, it was never quite as exciting as, as i thought it might have been well i for me it worked quite well because i think what again this kind of gives is like here's kind of like the peaceful life that ultimately everyone's fighting for is like a glimpse of that because everyone's kind of happy so that's kind of nice um I did like some other little tidbits though. I liked Alexander. He's looking at this newspaper. He's like, oh, unsolved murder in this other town from 33 years ago. And I'm like, ah, we're getting, starting to get a bit closer to whatever he did yeah. uh, before he came to Wyndham. You know? Um, the scene between Hannah and Ulrich out in the swings and then they kind of have the same conversation they had at the bus stop in season one yeah. in the 80s. Uh, so they kind of bond a little bit. Um, interesting that that affair seems to be kicking up before Michael's death. Um, not that I necessarily assumed it was after. It's just it's just interesting that now we've defined it. No, it was kind of starting to, you know, get there before. Yeah, I'm not even sure this is necessarily the first time it's happened between them. I, uh, I think this might have been something that's happened off and on throughout. The you years. may be right. I got the feeling here though that it kind of it kind of felt like a like. I think because Michael's starting to be acting out of it because he's he's getting closer to the the date, mm. right? I I think like he's been more his, distant with Hannah, and I think that's kind of what's almost bringing all of her like temptations and feelings back. Uh, Maybe. You know? yeah. Um, uh, that that'd be my read on it right now. But I mean, th- I mean, the show could easily prove or disprove that uh, yeah. at any point. Uh, what's interesting to me about Jonas going with uh with uh, Claudia into the cave is. Um, are they traveling via the bridge, which means that Jonas is now permanently uh, a little bit behind the previous, like you know, version of the show where it was always this year, this year, this year. He's like six, seven months behind that now. Or uh, is she get the time machine on her, so they're just going to wherever or whenever I should say. <laughs> um, I assume the time machine just because it's mm-hmm. older Claudia. We've seen her with the time machine so much. No, that's fair. But, uh, that is kind of a baseless. Uh assumption it, i mean experience. we'll know for sure whenever he pops up next episode or so we'll, we'll yeah, know it won't be a huge mystery will it yeah if, if it happens to fall on this year or that year he's using the bridge if it's you know i mean he could be using the time machine still but um if he falls in any other year <laughs> it's definitely mm-hmm. the time machine uh so now that was that was that was the bulk of the jonas stuff and what he gets up to um what else is there to uh little tidbits uh, Peter going to see the prostitute and Francesca uh, catching him in the act. Yeah. Just, just these little bees. It's just kind of like showing you how a lot of these things started. You know, how Bartos first started flirting with, with Martha. Yeah, um, they're kind of mostly unimportant little things that you say. They're just kind of, oh, hey, here's just a little bit of extra context to these yeah. events that I'll, have been... I'll... So, during the episode, uh, Alexander uh, called Waller, who's yes. eye patch cop, and told him to look into something, and I was like, "Oh, we're going to find out what happened to his eye. It's happening." The set, and it didn't. He never showed up, the bastard. So I, I, we're still going to find out, damn it! But like... no, I told you, it's one of those forever jokes that they'll always they'll tease at it. They'll he'll, he'll start telling the story a few times over the course of the show. We'll never get there. I hope the final scene of the entire show is him getting stabbed in the. <laughs> Or him just taking off the eye patch and revealing, ta-da, there was two eyes the whole time. Whatever, but I want I want that as the final scene of the whole show now. After everything else wrapped up, <laughs> I want him, him. We get the scene where he what happens to his eye. Uh I don't know. I don't know. Um, but yeah. Uh, so yeah, we're really short on this episode actually. But I guess it was because so much of the other stuff was fairly uh, straightforward. Kinda... Outside of Jonas's stuff, it was mostly kind of fluffy extra texture. Uh, yeah, but it was rather all... than I, solid I, meat. <laughs> I enjoyed all the extra texture in this though. It was just a really nice, like back before everything went to shit kind of thing. Yeah, I get that. Yeah. Um, it was just it was especially interesting seeing Michael react to certain things. It was interesting seeing, you know, Hannah kind of have weird moments when she even she sa- sees uh, Michael and things like that. Uh, but just everyone being happy, like I still can't go over at Ulrich in that car, like teasing Jonas about being in his door. So weird. It's so weird. Um, stop teasing your grandson <laughs> about being in your door. Yeah. 
<laughs> Stop it. Pay me why you mean. Pay me why you mean. All right. Uh, so, no, I am very fascinated just to see where this is going next. But, of course, we have to talk about the, the final yeah, scene yeah. because yeah. we do go to Adam at the end. And in walk two characters, a man and a woman. And I was, I was really worried here for a second because I was like, I don't recognize these two. Am I, have I forgotten the two faces that I'm supposed to know? Because there's so many characters on this show, I get really worried for a second. And they say something along the lines of, uh, you know, Adam, why didn't you, you tell him, you know... What, what he was really there to do. Yeah, why didn't you tell him what the plan really was? Uh, and Adam's like, no, 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 he has to think this way so it'll happen as it's supposed to, or, or you know, whatever he said. Yeah. Um, and then he, then he calls the, the man by his name. He calls him Magnus. <laughs> so presumably the woman is Martha. And tell him they're told otherwise. Well, I mean, there's very few suspects that it could be at this point. Martha, me, 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 Francesca, maybe. Francesca, yeah, maybe if they're, if they're, if they're a couple. But um, I'm going I'm going to... Ass- mm. I don't know, I could see it being Francesca, actually. Yeah. I think those, those are argument. the two only realistic... Uh, True. Yeah. yeah. Guesses that we could have, I think. Because we already has have Elizabeth slash Heather in the future. Yes. Yeah. I, I thought very uh, noticeable that we didn't see a young Elizabeth in this one because guess just at that age where it was a bit awkward, right? Yeah. She looked. Should have looked far too. Because I was even thinking that with Michael in a few scenes, where he's like, he looks a little bit too big. They, they, to... they, but they had to do it with Michael. Yeah. They, it was they essential. Had to. Yeah. They did um, their best. It, it looked fine, but like. Yeah, I think like... that's that, that's clearly why he had Rubella, just they could cover him up a bit and we get, <laughs> get away with it. Why is he covered in the spots and rashes this episode? Because just to distract you, yeah, to hide you from the truth that he's he's bigger and older. Yeah. Um, so you know, it is what it is. But like, so yeah, Magnus is working with Adam, and but for the record, actually, once I knew it was Magnus when we got that final shot of his face, I was like, you know what, that's not actually bad casting again. I can actually kind of see a bit of Magnus in him. Yeah, I, I, I've been thinking that a lot because uh, even in this episode, um, Michael specifically, like I say, you know, he was in one scene. Last yeah. Season, then, but this this episode where I'm seeing him next to to Mikkel, I'm like, do you know what? I can kind of see it. <laughs> There's just enough there where I'm going, yeah, yeah. I'd buy this. Yeah. Yeah, I felt that way with, with uh, Magnus at the end. And this is just yeah. so fascinating because Magnus and Martha and those characters have just been those characters in that one time zone. And they've, tra- they've traveled, obviously, that one time, but you have not seen other versions of any of them yet. Um, in fact, Elizabeth, uh, outside of Jonas, obviously, was the, was the first one we did see more of uh, yeah. in terms of a different version. So it's fascinating. And it's like, if this is Jonas versus Adam and we have o- this you know older Magnus working with Adam, like... This makes this war really weird and messy. Like, you know, Adam's got people on his side. Claudia's got people on her side. It makes you even more going, well, is Adam really the bad guy? Because... Yeah, well, know, I mean, it's I worth mentioning. Magnus is on his side now. It's like, okay, it's kind of like, hey, this is the gang of friends. And, and it's, for, the, for the record, like, this episode makes a point of showing that Magnus is kind of a good person. Like, they, they have a scene in this episode that is devoted to just... No, he thinks someone's in trouble and he goes diving to help. Um, yeah. and it turns into an awkward moment but like his intentions are, are, are fine and so they, they kind of set that up and Martha as well we've never seen anything from her that suggests anything other than a decent human being right and realistically all we have to go on that Adam is you know the, the true evil one really is Claudia's word and, and the fact that they were killing kids well sure but again we kind of talked around that that could have been justified if they were truly trying to undo everything yeah 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 uh, like I can kind of see a logic to th- their plan in that, um, but Claudia here outright says, "No, no, no, you know, he's the dark, I'm the light." Uh, so, I mean, but should we just believe her? <laughs> it's tempting to because you know all every everything yeah. we know points to him being you know the the villain, but. That that makes me slightly less convinced. It almost it, honestly, I feel like I feel like we're going to get to a point where neither one's good or bad. It's going to be two just equal shades of grey, just slightly different ideologies. Yeah, um, and I do wonder if the idea of Jonas being the important one, like he makes, he needs to make a choice and like realize something and make a choice that he never did in any previous cycle, right? Where he chooses to do something that's different from every other version of Jonas up until that point. Um, yeah. Assuming that one of them is trying to achieve change, which I guess is the other thing is that 
Adam right now, it seems like he is trying to keep things the same. But again, we we heard that from Claudia, and because of his actions in this episode where he did send them here to just make sure things happen, it feels that way. But it could be a long game. It could be Adam saying, no, no, he's eventually going to cause change because this version of Jonas has this thing different about him than I did. And, and here's the thing, though. He might be going, okay, I want this all to happen as it is to get to where I am now uh, as Adam, because he we know... Okay, he's building a pretty advanced time machine god particle thing. Mm. He clearly has plans to do with that. So it's not uh, leaving things as they are, you know, as the status quo is clearly not his long term plan. He has something else in mind. Whether it is to destroy everything, like Claudia says, though, is a little more debatable, I think. Yeah. Um, and last the time machine is just purely so that Jonas could go back here. Like, it was just the goal, just to make sure Jonas could travel back uh, when he needed to. I, I would say no, because uh, Adam clearly said there's still another iteration to come after what he's already got there. Sure, sure. Also, I mean, talking about building upon it. Honestly, this actually goes against something we said last episode, actually, now that I'm thinking about it. Um, we were saying how this version of the time machine is new in this cycle. It can't be. If Jonas was always going to go back and can you yeah. know basically get Michael to commit suicide, if that was essentially going to happen no matter what, then th- this this could still be the latest iteration of the time machine, but it's not new to this cycle. No. No, it can't be. Um, unless someone else convinced them, but I doubt it. I'm pretty sure it was Jonas as we see it uh, in this. Yeah, me too. Um, what what I'm curious about is that if when something happens, it does definitively change like no this is different from a previous cycle like is it going to be super clear like is it going to is it going to are we going to feel it are we going to feel this change where it's like you know how how will we know because everything else in the show is is subtle ripple effects right there's only a couple of big things you could change you know okay wipe in general from existence yes clearly something changed yes. right um but a lot of it is just ripple effects i honestly i, I think it would be a case of we have to go back to one of the days that we've seen before and just see it play out again, but yeah. differently. You know, ha- have, well, it's this episode's day or the day from the, the first episode last season, but see it not play out that way again. See Mikkel not go into the cave. See whatever. It'd have to be something that we've definitively already seen, I imagine, to confirm it. Yeah, yeah I'm with you. Um, Although, like I said, I am suspecting a lot of season three might be replaying through the same days anyway. Because I'm thinking that because again, I'm... we're we're going. We know we're coming to the end of a cycle. Uh, we're having this apocalypse, which is like imminent. I mean, it's not. We don't move forward a day this time because we went to like a new day, which was a neat way. Because because I've been wondering all season, going, hey, you know, it's count. This is counting down pretty consistently one yeah. day per episode, but that leaves us with an episode to spare. And now we don't uh, because we had this episode. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, which which is cool. That makes sense. Um, so and we've been saying all season we're expecting the next season to be this last cycle, this new cycle, even. And that obviously I'm still expecting some characters to know about this cycle because, as Claudia says, I've seen versions without you in it. That clearly sh- tells us that some people are experiencing through multiple cycles. They Absolutely, s- they're seeing through multiple cycles. So. Season three, definitively, I'm I'm saying it now, damn it, is going to have new versions of things that we've already seen. Yeah, yeah. So pretty sure of that. There we go. It's it's just the the obvious route to go, and not in a bad or oh, obvious. Don't do that sort of way. But no, this is you know what good storytelling is. If you can see kind of where it's going, to a vague degree. No, you, you, and then you, they can you know put in all the surprises they want. You kind of want them to. I mean, I, I guess in this episode it was kind of Back to the Future Two, in it, but we never really saw this day specifically outside of the suicide. Um, yeah. But you kind of want that feeling of Back to the Future. Oh, you've never seen second one of the live. I'm sure you get the reference that I'm making. I, I do. Is I've going back into the events of the previous seasons and uh, yeah. playing with them. So I'm excited by that. Uh, but that is episode six of Dark. That is uh, episode six. We have two left. Uh, seven will be day after tomorrow, uh, barring any delays. So look forward to that. Uh, let us know what you thought of the episode and your own theories and stuff up until this point in the comments below. Uh, like and subscribe, all that stuff. Uh, you can support us by uh, reviewing, us on your, reviewing us on your podcast app. Uh, you can also support us financially by going over to patreon.com slash TV, where you can support us for as little as $1 per month and you get bonuses, extras, and some stuff early, um, and you keep the reviews coming, and so you can go do that. Um, and uh, I guess we didn't really go that much shorter than usual on this episode after all. It's still short. This is by far the shortest one. 
Yeah, but not significantly. <laughs> By far. Uh, actually, episode one might have been a bit shorter, actually. This may, have, this may still be longer than the first episode, but every episode since two has been healthily over 40 minutes. Healthily. Yeah, but not like by a, you know, a huge margin. You're literally trying to win the argument by stalling so that this will get I'm, closer. I'm actually not, although it, it had occurred to me as you were saying. Because we're literally about to have... And there's 40 minutes on the timer uh, from when the record button was hit. Ah, uh, what a shame. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh, to promote other things that we are doing that you may be interested in, Amazon's Too Old to Die Young, we're reviewing that episode 4 review of that just went up. Um, we're going to do that a little bit slower than Dark, um, mainly because more people are watching our Dark reviews, but also because those episodes are longer and it's, it's more of a, a healthier, or not healthier, but... It's, a, it's uh, more of a scheduling issue to fit them in, yeah. with being longer, significantly longer episodes at that. Yeah, so, so half of those episodes are 90 minutes long, so they're, they're quite me. Um... So check out those, uh, check out our other reviews for things like Tool, uh, for, that's for Tool Today Young, but check out Handmaid's Tale and Big Little Lies and, and whatever else. Uh, check out some of our movie content. We have a horror movie podcast called Screams After Midnight. We have a sci-fi movie podcast called The Atomic Cinema Experiment. You can check out those. Uh, easy to find on YouTube, of course, or you can get lists to all the audio feeds on our Patreon uh, at the previously mentioned patreon.com slash TV. As we're coming towards the end of the show, uh huh, we should mention Stranger Things starts up. Very soon. Very soon, yes. Yeah, so we will be covering that, don't worry. Next week, in fact. Yeah. So, yes, we'll be covering Stranger Things on this uh, Netflix audio feed and obviously on the YouTube channel. So that is us. Thank you once again for watching or listening. We always appreciate it. Keep watching TV, guys. Have you got any vanilla?